Uh, greetings from the other side of the planet. Uh, it's eight o'clock at night here in Alabama. Um, but uh, I'm honored and pleased to be invited to participate in the program. I know that we tried to do this um, at last February, but we were interrupted. And so my congratulations to all of my good friends at the PSC for being able to uh, pull this together. So let me just uh, launch standing accredited sport university in the US. Uh, we've been around since 1972 and we've done programs all over the world in about 65 countries. And I ought to note that uh, Professor Doubt was a uh, beneficiary of that in the early 80s. And uh, uh, I was one of the faculty that taught in that program in the mid 80s. Uh, and what ironically enough is the current campus of the Philippine Sport Institute. And uh, we're looking forward to the day that uh, we will be able to uh, continue uh, to uh, teach on the campus there. So next. I personally believe it's diversification. And I was doing a, a consulting work for the uh, government of Bahrain. And we were actually helping them to plan the implementation of an interscholastic sport program. And one of the precepts that we used was that there was a need to take a seasonal approach. Um, and you'll see that in American interscholastic sport, there's a distinct fall season, a winter season, and a spring season. And the reason for that is, uh, as I explained to the officials there, that I would rather, as a youngster, be on the football team, because that's the most popular sport. I would rather sit on the bench and be able to say, I'm a member of the football team, than perhaps they may be a star in basketball or volleyball or in athletics. If you run football the whole year, then that person will sit there with not being able to expand and see if he has skills in other sports or other opportunities. And uh, by and large, diversification uh, is, in my opinion, a far better approach. Uh, I've seen uh, literature that uh, um, within the United States, for example, they're expecting what they call herd immunity to be reached uh, by maybe September of this coming year. The real problem there is that if herd immunity is not reached by September, what's going to happen with the Olympic Games in July? Um, that's a real question. I think that people are going to figure it out. I already mentioned uh, that there is mechanical devices to try and mitigate uh, the spread of the virus in crowded spaces by the use of intense light. The photons uh, eliminate the ability of the virus to connect to the human cells. Uh, there's already a serum vaccine that's being distributed. And uh, in the United States right now, about a million people a day are getting the vaccination. Uh, so to the extent that uh, the vaccine actually works, um, you're going to be building herd immunity in that respect. Um, and the last part is that where the vaccination you know, as a prophylaxis, it prevents the onset of the disease. Uh, I believe that there are other medications that will do the same thing like hydroxychloroquine. And there's another drug that's coming out of Australia. In fact, I'll send you the uh, little video piece that I saw on it through uh, Messenger if you want to see it, Henry. Um, and uh, basically, that would be able to treat uh, COVID infections early onset uh, within uh, 24 to 48 hours. 
provided the oxygen levels of the patient doesn't drop below 50%. So there's not only, there's a multi-prong approach, you know, to deal with it. Um, and we will get there. I think it's going to happen within this calendar year, but not as soon as I would like or anyone would like. And it's going to impact events and the movement of athletes and spectators between global events such as the Olympics or regional events like the Sea Games um, until all three of those things converge and come together to mitigate it. So today we are very thankful, the Philippine sports, all the stakeholders are very grateful to Dr. TJ Rosenditz for sharing to us the secrets of sports success of the United States. You have helped unlock the doors towards sports development opportunities that we can explore. And Dr. TJ has given important points to ponder about and act, and he highlighted the impact of urbanization. That means we need to improve facilities, infrastructure within our communities, the need for improving the economic life of the middle income so that they can spend more. And of course, the need to provide more leisure time and more leisure activities to our population. He also shared one of the secrets of sports development in the US and that is through the school system. And he has uh, discussed it uh, extensively during the question and answer. And I know the Department of Education is listening today and also the other, uh, the Commission on Higher Education in terms of making sure that the inputs learned from this presentation will be considered in their future planning. And with the pandemic, we have a lot of time to plan and shape the future of sports in the Philippines through the school system. And his presentation also on the performance pyramid and the model of scholastic based sports feeder system clearly defined the pathway for a sports development program from grassroots to elite, from grassroots to greatness. And he emphasized the need to work closely in developing a very sound interscholastic sports program. And I think we can look into the sample of the US in terms of how they schedule their sports competition. And finally, he said that it is important to make a strategy if we want to win more medals, we need to emphasize more on women where competition is even, especially with our women. And I know that we have similar data wherein women in the Philippines are having more medals compared to men. And of course, the possibility of PSC making some influence in the sports program, especially in the elite level, so that we can straighten, strengthen our sports. And finally, he emphasized the need for youth sports participation because he said, sports prepare the youth for a better life. So. Thank you very much, Dr. TJ, for that very wonderful presentation. We hope we could hold you more. And by the way, to all the participants and all those who are viewing in the Facebook page of PSC, we would like to inform you that PSC and USSA, through Dr. Rosenditz and Sir William Ramirez, is forging an understanding to implement a sports program here in the Philippines to prepare, to strengthen, and make our sports leaders, sports coaches, sports uh, physical educators become better and competitive in the world by having the programs, the certificate programs, diploma programs of the USSA brought to our country. And I think the present pandemic will allow us to have some kind of a virtual program and hopefully it will be launched soon and we would like to keep you posted. So with that, thank you very much for your time and I know you're a bit, very busy man and we are very grateful for making this a very special day launching for our sports summit. Thank you very much. <laughs>